Good afternoon. Glad to be with you today. This is uh, Crosswinds International. I'm hoping that you'll listen to what has to be said. I searched out the Lord and I asked Him to speak to me about things. And, uh, and so, if you're going to speak, you want to speak on His behalf. You want to say, this is something that needs to be looked at in the body of Christ, and especially in the kingdom of God. And as he began to deal with these kind of things with me, I thought, okay, well, I'm sure that you've, you've spoke to me several times of late of this kind of thing. And so I am going to be speaking to you on uh, the subject of honest to God. Honest to God. And I want you to listen because I'm going to give you some statistics today. Don't, don't get bored. I just want you to hear. You're going to be shocked by them. Okay. But first, in the Talmud, you don't know what a Talmud is, do you? That's, uh, that's the Jewish part of the scripture in the beginning. Anyway, there's in the Talmud, it, uh, and then they have other stories in there too. It tells the story of a king who had two jesters, whose sage and filthy wisdom were the talk of the kingdom. But one day, in a philosophical mood, the king sent, uh, sent them out on an era, uh, errand, and he said, Simon, my fool, would you, can you imagine your job title being fool? Okay, Simon, my fool, go out and bring back the best thing in the world. And you, John, go out and secure for me the worst thing in the world. In a short while, both jesters were back, each with a package. Simon bowed low, and the best thing in the world, sire, and he unwrapped the package to reveal a tongue. Then John began to laugh and quickly unwrapped his bundle. The worst thing in the world, O king, he said, is a tongue. <laughs> so he printed, presented the tongue. Uh, I'm not so certain that the king would be happy with the gifts that he brought back. <laughs> but truly, they were fools, right? <laughs> you know, what do you expect of a fool? Anyways... Speech is arguably the man's greatest gift and at the same time is the most dangerous thing we can have. And maybe that's the reason he only gave people tongues and speech processes and that kind of thing. Could you imagine if everything in the world talked dogs, cats? <laughs> the world would be filled with noise, right? Anyway, it is impossible to estimate the good that has been done, though, through the wisdom, teachers, scientists, the things that they have used their tongue for, and, and truthfully, uh, they have instructed and inspired people. And from generation to generation, the tongue has done good. But by contrast, we uh, cannot measure how much evil the tongue has perpetrated and the falsehoods disguised as truth have destroyed reputations and even nations. You can't cut on the television without seeing it. Think about what you see every week. And the people cutting people and ruining reputations and, you know, and I, and I think about all that and here's, here's one of the things that really gets under my skin that a lot of these people think they're Christians. Right? So, and do you know in the Ten Commandments there are two things that God put there, the third and the ninth commandments. One is, is that you don't take the Lord's name in vain. In other words, that's the use of your tongue using His name in a wrong way or even telling people that you belong to Him and you don't. Or you, you know, it's vain, it's empty. That's what He's saying. Don't use my name in a vain kind of way. The other uh, we will see in just a moment is, is that He tells us that we don't use our tongue to lower other people, hurt, hurt other people, and that kind of thing. Okay? So, yeah, these seem to be broken in, uh, with impunity. Do you know what impunity means? 
It means without punishment. We have an entire society that has a tendency to break God's laws continuously and they don't seem to get in trouble for it. Well, what's happened is, is our society has changed. Okay? Sometimes even by those who are aware of the application of their words, they themselves go out and they will use their tongue for evil. But we're going to get into the, what that evil is in just a moment. Because the drives and the motives of humans are there and those drives are so powerful. You know, when Satan is in control of the mindset, that he also controls the tongue of a person. Have you ever heard somebody that, you know, their tongue was evil continuously? Okay. And so God's saying, look, I'm going, to, I'm going to charge you with this, that you will give an account for every idle word. All right? And the night that says, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. How many of you have ever had somebody gossip to you about somebody else? Tell lies on people? Make somebody look less in your eyes. Okay. Lying is one of the things that God hates. Everybody knows that, you know, liars and lying abound in the earth, right? Have you ever lied yourself? I'm not getting any answers. You're afraid to lie again, aren't you? Everybody knows that marketers lie. How many of you have ever had a product sold to you and it wasn't all that you thought it was? Okay. Do you think God's happy with that? Well, they're making a living off of lying, right? Okay, books and magazines and movies feature liars of many types and stripes. The media and the public have caught pro uh, prominent government officials, especially of late, uh, from presidents on down lying about important subject matter, right? Do you think God's watching? Okay. If it was just the world, but it didn't, it's the church as well. According to an article, and this is, by the way, a Christian woman, Jan Mendenhall, college kids lie to their moms 50% of their conversations. Dating couples lie to each other one-third of the time. Hmm. Spouses deceive each other in about 10% of the major conversations they're in. 12% of Americans lost their jobs because they misrepresented themselves when they went in to get a job. If you don't think that's bad... <laughs> A November survey conducted by a publisher of Who's Who's among American high school students revealed that 76% uh, of the students listed in their publication, supposedly the elite achievers, admitted to having cheated on tests. By the way, you do know that there were superstars and that kind of thing going to jail because they were getting their kids into schools. Um, this was just last in the last couple of months, and uh, but two thirds of the, uh, these people believe it's no big deal. Here's the problem: uh, they they don't think that cheating is a is a big deal. And then when we look at it, it was followed up by 65 percent of their parents agree with them, just as long as you get through. What does God think about this? what's happened to our nation. We use a large number of euphemisms to soften the act of lying, but it's still a lie. Here's some of those. Duplicity. Well, 
Just a disagreement, right? Fabrication, evasion, stringing someone along, inaccuracy, exaggeration, fudging, rationalizations, falsehood, a whopper, uh, deception, misrepresentation. You know what a whopper is, right? <laughs> I'm not talking the one at Burger King. Okay. <laughs> big lies, big lies. Deception, misrepresentation, dishonesty, putting someone on, putting up a front, or fibbing. Oh, it was just a little white lie, right? Jesus in John chapter 1, verse 47, he's looking at disciples and then he looks up and, and he had, you know, he had just heard a conversation with Nathaniel. And Jesus thought it was so strange that there was a, an Israelite in Israel that actually believed in telling the truth. Wonder why that is. Because all of the people in Israel had a problem with truth. Pilate had a problem with truth, didn't he? With Jesus. What is truth? Who's truth? In other words, if you don't have a standard of truth, there's nothing. It's not a lie, right? It's just what you believe. Now, when you've got a whole church full of people that think that you can just believe old, any old thing and that kind of, you've got a problem. Because right at that point, you've got people that are making up their own truth. And they don't think that that day will come that they'll have to give an account for that. So in John 1, 4 to 7, Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and he said, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no deceit. He found one in Israel. One. Without deceit means simple, without subtility, Candid and sincere. Jesus pointed out one in all of Israel that believed in telling the truth. Well, lying is such an integral part of the fabric of our lives, isn't it? I mean, you, you talk to people and they lie to your face. Or they lie behind your back. Sometimes it's both. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, we've coined such expressions in our society as uh, this mild disbelief as, is that so? In other words, have you ever heard somebody say that to you? Is that so? Mm -hmm. Or, do you really mean it? Because they don't know who they can trust anymore. Right? Character doesn't mean a lot in, in America. Evidently in Israel too. Anyway, we expect the advertisers to exaggerate the quality of their products when they come and set down your house. You think, my, my goodness, this thing will do everything. Until it, they leave and then it doesn't do any of those things well. Okay? Okay. <laughs> We expect politicians to be crooked, to lie, to be evasive, to use their positions to become wealthy, and to make under-the-table deals with contractors, even crime figures. Right? You don't know any politicians that would do that, right? Now, I'm asking you, when you're listening to this today, to weigh our, not just our country, but our families and ourselves. We know that businessmen lie. They give a little in return, you know, for the high cost of traffic they will bear. In other words, they'll tell you in a minute a lie. So you don't know who to trust, right? 
Well, if you can't trust the people of God, who can you trust? Because we're the standard bearer in the world. If you can't trust that our children are telling truths, where, you know, where are they getting their standard from? Okay. Another survey by Joseph and Edna Joseph and Josephson, they're Jewish. A third of the high school students said that they were willing to lie on a resume, a job application, or an interview to get a desired job. About one in six high school students and, uh, and college students admitted that they had already done so. Four of five high school students and three of five college students said that they had lied to their parents at least once in the past year. That doesn't bother you, does it? Okay, this is national hypocrisy. It appears that honesty is not considered an essential aspect of personal character. So if we don't have the quality of character that we need, then people, yeah, they look at you and they're going, that's why they roll eyes, isn't it? Because they don't know who they can trust anymore. Because the character of God is not leading the church or our families. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 4, it says, He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all of His ways are justice, a God of truth and without injustice. Righteous and upright is He. He sets the example for the church to follow. We are supposed to be as He is. Amen? Deuteronomy 32 and 5 says they have corrupted themselves. Now this is his own people. He's talking about they have corrupted themselves. They are not his children because of their blemish. A perverse and crooked generation. In other words, you couldn't trust them as far as you could spit. And these are the people of God. So what is truth? Without true values, civilization will not continue but descend into a revolution and anarchy. In other words, you're going to be continually in war because there is no standard for agreement. And the only thing that we're supposed to be agreeing on is truth. What is truth? And that's a, that is a fair question. These days, it's very hard to find truth, isn't it? God's Word, His doctrine is true and faithful just as He is. It is a reflection of His nature and His character. So when you say that I'm a Christian and you say that I have chosen to follow God but your character does not show it, then that is called a what? Lie. Any society or family built on, uh, on the truth is going to prosper and become great in godly terms. Jesus' first coming left mankind without an excuse regarding the eternal question, what is truth? What did he say in John 14? I am truth. The way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father except by me. What credibility that gives to the one is teaching. Listen to me. If somebody doesn't have truth, his truth, moral truth, well, let's, let's just see. A person can teach us mathematical, grammatical, spelling, geographical, historical truth, and what his character is doesn't matter. But a person teaches moral truth, his example, character, conduct, attitude are all important. Who wants to be lectured on purity by an adulterer or honesty by a liar and a thief? Amen. Boy, I'm telling you, this is just a dead crowd today. I'm just, uh, I guess this didn't it right. Anyway, Jesus, or maybe it's too close to home, Jesus lived what he taught with total purity, 
never a shadow of turning. He sets the example for Christianity. He told them that this was what you would have to do to be pleasing to God. He was absolutely stable, firm, reliable. He didn't have a, a bad day. He didn't have a poor attitude. He didn't have depressive states until he got in the garden. <laughs> he did. Genuine representative of eternal life. The way of life that he established on earth at his return. Or right, this is what he's going to he's gonna do. He said no corrupt thing is going to enter into this kingdom. No corrupt thing is now do you think God can lie? Do you think Jesus can lie? He could, but he won't. You see, because that would be duplicity. <laughs> God has uh, no will to lie. He doesn't see that lying is going to bring any good to anyone. So he sets the standard and he leaves. Expecting us to teach people to walk in truth and them to be like him. How many of you know that there are times that you have not told the truth? And because of that, what does he say in the Word about it? I'll, I'll go on and give you that. Anyway, John 17, 17 says that God's Word is truth. The Greek translation is aletheia, which uh, means closely resembles reality. In other words, what I say is real. It's true. You can bank on it, that kind of thing. It means the manifested, unconcealed essence of a matter. A living, saving faith depends on the premise by a man that God is true in his, his being and his character. The truth forms the basis for that person's conversion. And if they don't see truth, do, do you represent truth? Because if you don't, see, people don't know if they can trust what you say either. Does that make sense? Okay. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. We don't get to change the plan. He changes the man. Okay? <laughs> Why do we lie? Let's look at why people lie. We lie to cover up. We fear some, uh, that something that we wish to hide is going to be exposed. We also lie to rise above feelings of inadequacy and inferiority to, and, and, or to lower the third party in the eyes of others so that we can elevate our own selves, right? Nobody ever done that stuff, right? Have you ever tried to... Let, let, me, let me tell you one of the signs of a lie. It's the brag. It's the brag. So, the latter reason tends to elevate ourselves in our own eyes and we hope in the eyes of others, right? How many of you have ever been fooled by a liar? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Okay. Consider this thing. I want you to listen now. Cosmetics. Not a woman in here wants to hear this. Makeup is frequently used to hide, to cover up what we consider to be inadequacies of beauty. But we've got to ask a question. But by whose standard are we inadequate? And are we really being a true witness of ourselves if we're trying to cover up all the time? I'm not telling you don't put on some makeup. For heaven's sake, do. If it makes you feel better about yourself, go on and do it. But I just want you to know why you do it. You're cover covering up what we would call flaws, right? 
and everybody's got some. All right. Was, but isn't that a lie? I want you to believe I'm all beautiful. Well, good Lord, you've got a quarter inch of pancake makeup on. Oh, that's, that's a, she had the most beauty. No, I've never heard that. Yeah, I, I always hear these people going, Do you see how much makeup she had on? As if she smiled, her face would crack, right? <laughs> My dad used to say, they're full of mud. Anyway, <laughs> John 8, 44 says this, You belong to, this, this is Jesus talking to people that thought that they were righteous, but they, they ran around and they, they lied to each other. And he said, You belong to the, your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and the father of all lies. So, you say, well, I don't follow Satan. Every time you lie, you do. You're carrying out his commission. You're breaking the, with the word of God and you're yielding your members to him. His servant ye are. Right? And, and you can't feel good about, you know, serving Satan and, and thinking it's okay to do both. All right? Revelations 21.8 says this, But the fearful, how many of you are fearful? And the unbelieving, and the abominable, and the murderers, and the whoremongers, and the sorcerers, and the idolaters, and all... Isn't it amazing? He put this all in front. All liars shall have their part in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Boy, that, doesn't that scare you? Well, you know, your, your feet could be over the lake of fire. Okay? But I'm, I'm not going to leave you there. I am going to give you hope. Okay? Today's challenge. <laughs> First, ask God if you have a problem with lying. See, because you have yielded your tongue to lie. And it happens over and over and over again. Actually, if you keep doing it, the lie becomes your truth. But ask God to break the habit of lying and set you free with His truth. John 8, 36 says this, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you are free indeed. Who can absolutely deliver you from a lying habit? The church doesn't need to be known for all the sophisticated liars that we have. Right? <coughs> Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, it says... It is for freedom that Christ came, has came to set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Every time you yield to Satan, that every yielding to Satan causes you to go further and further into the depths of slavery. That means you don't have any control. You're being controlled now by a spirit that wants you to do something to break with God. And he's filled with lies. He will tell you lies all day long and he'll get you telling the same lies. Amen? But God doesn't want that to happen. Well, as I get ready to conclude, I'm going to give you several scriptures to think about here. Thinking that all, if you think that it's all right to lie, even a little one. There are no little lies to God. It's a lie is a lie is a lie. So, thinking that it's all right to lie is a very serious error for a Christian to hold on to. It shows a misunderstanding of God Himself. Proverbs 16, or 6, 17 says, God hates a lying tongue. What does hate mean? Uh, a long ways from, it's okay, baby. I understand. 
No. Proverbs 20, uh, 12 and 22 says, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are His delight. In other words, if you can tell the truth, He's delighted in you. Psalm 31 and 5 says, uh, uh, Call God the, uh, the God of truth. The psalmist wrote, For the word of the Lord is right, and all of His wa words are done in truth. Psalm 33 and 4. And we, and we read in Leviticus, You shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie to one another. Did you know in the New Testament he had to tell the church to quit lying? Proverbs 13 and 5 says, A righteous man hates lying. Lying is always... Uh, is and always will be wrong in the in the eyes of God. Okay. And last, and the only hope you got, and I have, because he said all liars, right? All liars. If I left it there, you wouldn't have a uh, a scratch of a hope. But because of what he did. 1 John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Babies, our God wants truth coming out of us and He wants a standard of, qual or, uh, of character that is always going to abound in truth. Don't be afraid of anything that actually can't receive the truth. You need to be telling the truth at all times. I put before you this because it's one of the biggest things in the kingdom of God right now. And there are things in the kingdom of God that are, and, and I don't know if I'm going to get to preach it before he takes me home, but I, I hope about lying wonders. Things that people do in his name that are not true. And de you know, and Deuteronomy, I can go back that far and, and I can show you where God Himself had a spirit come before Him and there was a king that He wanted to take off the earth because the king was against Israel. And the spirit came before God and said, I can take care of that. He said, well, to the Spirit, what, what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to cause every prophet in Israel, all the prophets are going to have a lie in their mouth, and that king is going to believe he's going to overcome, and he's going to win. A lying spirit went out of the presence of the Lord And the mouths of the prophets were filled with deceit. You think it won't happen again, but it will. He tells us that in the scriptures too. That in these last days that, you know, there's that man of lawlessness that's going to appear. And the man of lawlessness, when he appears, is going to be able to do kind of miracles in the, in the face of people even call down fire from heaven. But his words are lies. And, because, and God allows that spirit to have its way. He actually says it this way. Because they didn't have a love for the truth. Because they didn't have a love for the Word of God. He let that spirit once again come and deceive, and a great delusion. Do you know what a delusion is? It's not just any lie. It's the lies that a person tells themselves. They're deluded. And because that spirit is going to be turned loose on them because they did not love the Word of God. They didn't read it. They didn't listen to it. They just, you know... 
Because of that, he's going to allow, allow a, he didn't call it just a delusion, he said a strong delusion to come and deceive them so that all of them that did not love the truth might be damned. It will be the damning thing that happens just before the Lord's return because they didn't love you know, that's what, what really makes me sad when I see churches, you know, the, they get together and they get ears tickled and that kind of thing. Or they, you know, they have a band and all this. I'm not, I'm not giving them a hard time. I'm just telling you, if you think that's what it's about, the primary thing of the church is to teach people the truth of the Word of God. And it's so very hard to find these days because it's, well, we don't believe like that. Like it's a choice. <laughs> there is a consequence for that choice. And I want people to be warned, not only here but around the world, I want them to be warned that that day is upon us. The man of lawlessness, you can't go anywhere where people are not lawless. And, and there's a man coming to rule over that lawlessness. But right before that happens, God's going to turn them over to a great delusion that they might be, uh, believe a lie. And He will have power. But it's the power of a lie to deceive and to, and to render them damned. That doesn't make me happy. I really wish people would listen to the truth while there is still time. Amen. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, I'm asking you before it's too late that our families would be able to hear the truth. They would be established in truth. Their families would be blessed by the truth. And Heavenly Father, I ask you in Jesus' name to cause our families to be able to have the character they need when you return. We've already read we would be like him. Thank you that we are your workmanship and that you're doing that work and you will continue to do that work until you appear. But Father, today in Jesus' name, there are people that won't hear the truth anymore. It offends them. And they don't want to change because they love their sin. And in Jesus' name, Lord, I ask you to, to cause personal revivals to happen all over the world. That the Holy Spirit would be poured out and their eyes would be illuminated and you would cause them to be able to see the hour that they're in. Now we ask this that you might be glorified. And Heavenly Father, even you gave us the parable that the, you, you sent them out to find people in the highways and the byways. I ask you, Lord God, that you will conclude this age with a great revival. And those people will be born again, saved, names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, if you don't know Jesus, just ask Him to come to your heart. If you've been living for Satan, repent. God, I'm sorry. Come deliver me from that, that spirit, that bondage, that enslavement. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. And He will. Just that simple. Then tell other people, I've changed. I've changed masters too. Father, thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for those that will pray and ask you in their heart. And we ask you today, Lord God, be glorified. Amen.